Cheers, everybody. We are back for another edition of Bourbon on a Budget. We are excited to be with you guys tonight. Thank you for tuning in. Um, as always, myself, TJ Pittenger, alongside Brendan Sinone and Ben Cock. Gentlemen, how are you doing tonight? Good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're doing great. <laughs> Do I need to give you a little bit more energy? I'm sorry. I, uh, I was just thinking, like, it's crazy. This is our third week of doing this already. Like, we're, we're here. We're doing things. We got people, like, following us on Twitter and uh episodes are live and you know it's good stuff happening i'm I'm, yeah. exci- I'm legitimately excited i know they come off in my hello but hello <laughs> ben's got enough energy for both of you so it's really not a big deal at all <laughs> ben's like been our heel for the evening um uh, but no i'm with you on that i talked to both of you guys on the phone separately today and i got to use the same jokes twice it was great Ooh, um nice. but i'm the same way this is obviously our new kind of shiny toy our new thing that we're doing but Unlike some other podcasts that both Brendan and I do, which is about a million each, um, this doesn't feel like a grind just yet because we're literally sitting around drinking bourbon and talking about it. And so it may eventually feel like a grind to have to sit here and drink bourbon, but I, you know, think that's less of a likelihood as God, you know, I talking. Hope, to- I hope. I hope not, man. <laughs> yeah. That would be that would be really sad. Yeah, I mean. Having to put up with Richie Barnes, that is really tough. That is a grind. <laughs> having to put up with Josh Newberg, that is a grind. You guys are not a grind yet. So uh, no, there will be no grinding on this show. Um, so tonight we are going to be talking about um, some bourbon gone wrong. We're going to get into some turkey talk, if you will. That's wild turkey, if you don't mind. And uh, some epic pursuits and purchases. We've had a great week in oh these households almost at this household but we don't all live together and then we are going to go into some shocking shocking shopping hacks um ben some got, of those hacks some of those hacks may be shocking so shocking, shockingly shopping hacks mm-hmm. shocking shopping hacks um and so we'll get into all of that tonight but we're glad you're with us uh, if you are listening to this on itunes if you could do us a favor and leave a five-star review whether you think this is a five-star podcast or not we would prefer the five-star reviews over the four three two or that really low number one so five-star reviews only send this to a friend share this with somebody we are excited uh, like brendan said shows are live um this is going to be pretty dated when it comes out because we're a couple of weeks behind but we were ranked in the top 120 on iTunes um, Woo! Woo! category on our first day. That was fun. Hopefully, by the time this drops, we'll be even higher. But, uh, yeah, super exciting, super fun. And uh, I'm done talking. Let's jump into this. Uh, what are you guys drinking tonight, Brendan? So, because we're, we're going over some wild turkey products today, I decided, I don't know if you guys can see it uh, in front of my big board here. Uh, I blended Russell's Reserve, uh, both the single barrel and then the 10-year. I did a wild turkey 101, and I did some long branch which is uh, matthew mcconaughey endorsed all right all right all right and it's in this one glass and actually guys is freaking fantastic this smells amazing it's a vanilla bomb let's go mm-hmm. oh my god the, what about you the, ben what do you got going on there Brendan well Brendan. i'm gonna drop some hints and some foreshadowing i picked up this uh uh generations of proof a set from costco and it is a maker's mark cask strength um weeded bourbon so i'm pretty stoked on this um if you're paying attention there's a little bit of foreshadowing to come there so Mm. be prepared for later in our show is there any foreshadowing that you just did um on that little tell or am i picking up what you're putting down or or did you foreshadow anything ben (laughs) there were some shadows being forward Uh (laughs) for okay so i am drinking an elijah craig toasted barrel um I won this in an online raffle. Um, I don't, I think I spent, I think I spent $10 to win this. Maybe eight. Maybe it was That's incredible. Well, I was one out of 10 chance. I've lost some raffles. So (laughs) I've I've lost some raffles, but I spent $8, won this. Uh, If we were doing a review, the value on this would be off the charts at $8, but it is really good. (laughs) Uh, Retails around 55 bucks. Uh, But yeah, for $8, you, you really can't beat it. So glad to hear what you guys are drinking. Glad that we got a comment on Twitter today that somebody was upset that you guys were drinking coffee and water on the first, um, first episode, but Hey, uh, stop that. That's been fixed. We haven't done it since. So give us, 
It's some great, some but I'm just right. trying to, you know, include the Twitter followers and stuff. All right. All right. Bourbon Gone Wrong, our first little segment of the evening. Thank you, Brendan, for this segment. If anything can go wrong or be awkward, it is brought to you by Brendan Sinone. Bourbon mm. Gone Wrong, how have you guys in the past or recently, which is still in the past, but either distant past or recent past, how have you guys messed up a good pour of bourbon? All right, I've, I've got two. One's kind of related to the wild turkey topic for tonight uh, and more recent. And that was this weekend. I decided it was hot out over the weekend. And I decided to, that's about the only time I ever like to put a little bit of ice in my bourbon is when it's hot outside. Usually I like to drink it neat. Uh, but I had some of the Russell's single barrel, uh, which is a spicier, like 55 proof version of the, the Russell's that we did previously. Uh, and I have heard before that if you add a little bit of lemon juice, like maybe like, like, like a squeeze a lemon wedge or something that can really add some like interesting, unique flavors to a bourbon. Uh, and TJ had also been saying that he doesn't like the way that that ice cubes taste out of the refrigerator, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So I decided to to say, you know what, we have some some ice cubes that are actually just straight up lemon juice that my wife uh, pro procured procured uh, from our lemon tree. Uh, so we had that in there. I took a whole chunk of lemon ice cube, put it in the bourbon and said, let's see what happens. It started off kind of interesting, a little weird. About two minutes in, it actually got really good. And then about two minutes later, it turned to poop. So I ruined a you know $55 you know, bottle of bourbon, not the whole bottle, but the pour of it was, was essentially ruined. So that was one. The other one was, and this is blasphemy, uh, Henry McKenna 10, 10 year. I decided to put it in a in a barrel for an aging project that I had done with some maple syrup bourbon previously. Uh, it did not go very what? well, and I ruined a really nice bottle of bourbon with that too. So I'm pretty embarrassed of the last one. The first one I thought was a a fair shake. The last one uh, was stupid. I'll give you that. Yeah, the first one you 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 wasted like two dollars and fifty cents, right? Yeah. Like three three bucks maybe. Uh, the the second one, the Henry McKenna, rest in peace to Mr. McKenna. I'm I don't know what I was doing. I just I <laughs> can't think of shocked. <laughs> Speaking of rip, there's a little foreshadowing. Um, Ben, do you uh, do you have any <laughs> do you have any thing that you ruined? Any pores? Um, mm, um, so luckily I haven't ruined a whole lot of nice pores. Uh. I, I kind of started drinking neat rather quickly, but early on, I've convinced myself that I think I've made bad pours worse by mixing them with a ton of Coke and thinking that was a solid decision. And uh, spoiler alert, it was not. It was a terrible decision. So um, there's no wrong way to drink bourbon. We'll say that multiple times, but there was certainly a wrong way for me to drink bourbon. And that was <laughs> a bunch of coke. <laughs> um, there's nothing better to me than when Ben, like it starts to get tickled and just like bust out laughing in the middle of his own diatribe. Like that is the absolute best. <laughs> um, I've never made a mistake. I'm perfect. Like it, I just, I have nothing here. Like nothing even gets close to coming to my mind of uh, something I've messed up. Um, that's so nice. Mm, must, yeah, it must be a nice place to live in. My yeah. humility also shines through. Um, I, I'm kind of like Ben. I started drinking stuff neat pretty early, so I've not really tried a lot of mixes. I mean, my worst transgression is probably just putting too much syrup in an old fashioned and just making it like literally like candy, you know, like when you're early, which even that's like, it's not bad. It's just really, really sweet and you just move on to the next one. So I don't know. It, you know, I'm not perfect. I've bought, in, I've bought, bad bottles I spent money I shouldn't have but I don't really have a lot of like here's how I ruined this drink or this bourbon because again I, I just kind of started drinking neat from an early age um from an early when you say age, early age. early time early time not an early age <laughs> he was drinking bourbon <laughs> yeah. out of the bottle's nipple yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, TJ talks about having uh, I've been in a bourbon for less than three months from an early time I started drinking <laughs> drinking it neat <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was drinking it neat with my grandfather at, at six years old. Um, turkey talk, our second segment of the night. A little gobble, foreshadowing gobble. here. That was a great turkey impression. <laughs> <Jeff>. That Ben, <laughs> I like Ben's better. 
it was less awkward. <laughs> um, <laughs> wild Turkey um, focus today. We did, we did the Buffalo trace distillery um, last week, Ben and Brendan, I got to ask you guys this. Why do you guys love wild Turkey? Ben, would you like to start? Because I feel like Ben's more the the wild tor- turkey. I was trying to combine two words there. Torky. Wild turkey whore out of the two of us. <laughs> I, I love wild turkey, but but Ben's been all about it so far. Yeah. Um. I. He so, didn't deny it. Did you notice that, TJ? He didn't deny the accusation. He just kind of leaned into it. So wild turkey is great for me. It's I I would say it is commonly overlooked, and uh, but they put out some great product. Um. I will say it once and I'll say it again. Uh, I like bourbons that put up a little bit of a fight, you know, so they come with a lot of uh, high rye, a lot of spice and, uh, you know, they're all turkey 101, which we'll be reviewing later this week. Tune in episode two uh, is excellent, right? But it puts up a little bit of fight. It's got some heat. It's amazing. Um, also the master distillers, father, son, I just had a son. He turned one like this week. So great. You know, another check in the box there. Um, and they put out some, okay. So right now, my formerly favorite bourbon was Old Forester 1920. And uh, I've been drinking Wall Turkey Rare Breed a lot lately. Um, so I did a blind with both of them. And for $15 cheaper a bottle, Wild Turkey beat it out. I was like, this is great. I can save a bunch of money and <laughs> drink some excellent bourbon. Um, so yeah, that's why wild turkey is great. It's overlooked. It is not the hype beast of Buffalo Trace. And it puts out stable stuff that I can walk into a store and find it. No matter if I'm in my hometown or in you know, the middle of freaking nowhere, everyone's going to have wild turkey. And I think that the, the comparison, I guess, is easy to do because Buffalo Trace was last week for us. And I don't think we'll do a distillery focused episode every single week but these are some big hitters early on uh, buffalo trace and wild turkey actually have some pretty comparable stuff when it comes to like price point and what it's supposed to be with the msrp however the buffalo trace stuff usually gets jacked up wild turkey typically does it and that accessibility at the price you can find it for is the reason why i love it like the 101 uh, that's a pretty special drink like i remember doing a blind with that and i think i had the pikesville rye which is a low rye rye uh and some other uh some other like 50 60 dollar bourbons and i'll be damned like wild turkey 101 punched above its weight class and it does that consistent consistently uh but then i also like that wild turkey also does a lot of experimentation too and they have their like their master's keep series has some really cool stuff i have the 17 year old bottled in bond that's one of my favorite bottles i've ever had mm-hmm. it's exquisite and it's like not, it's not cheap. It's about, uh, probably about $150, but you can find it with relative, well, relative ease, I guess. I, I you can find not, it way more than BTEC. For right? sure. For sure. Yeah. You, you could definitely, like, you can go into a whiskey group or stumble. Like I remember my Costco used to have the, the Masters Keep series before I really knew what it was. And wow. now they haven't had it in a little while, but they used to have it for like wow. 120 bucks. Uh, but anyway, so they, they do some, yeah, they do some really good stuff. They do some great experimentations. Their rye products are usually pretty good from my understanding. So wild turkey is just good. I think that's the bottom line. Wild turkey just does a lot of things, variety, really, really good. We're both smitten by this, TJ. I don't know if you can tell, but both of us are, are fans. I'm not quite as slutty with it as, as Ben is, though. WTB, wild turkey boys. <laughs> oh, I that's, like that. That's you guys. Hashtag. Um, what, what is your favorite? Uh, I'm going to change this up a little bit because I know the answer that I want to give. So what is your favorite either wild turkey product you've ever had your favorite pour from them your favorite bottle just your best experience with wild turkey uh we went ben first brendan go ahead i'm gonna go with the 101 i mean there's like the master's keep stuff is is excellent uh but for the price and i just love it it's like this sneaky bourbon that that some people especially new into bourbon like my dad when i told him about like wild turkey 101 he's like ah because it has this reputation as being swill, as being stuff that like would be served as like a well bourbon, like at a, at a bar in the middle of nowhere. Uh, 
but like it, it's starting to quickly become and maybe has been for the last year or so like something that like whiskey snobs or aficionados like realizes like bang for your buck one of the best bourbons out there so i love that wild turkey 101s is kind of like chintzy uh, it, it jabs at people it, it's a little aggressive but it's good uh, it's kind of a needler and uh and i like that in my in my bourbon that it that it kind of fights against uh, what people think of it ben um yeah i'll go back to that 1920 uh rare breed blind that i did and the rare breed beat it out which like i said it, it blew me away I, I remember thinking i want this to be the 1920 and i want this to be the rare breed but it wasn't and so yeah that was great i love that i think i'm gonna steal brendan's answer but for a very different um reason um I, when my wife was having contractions with my son, um, they wouldn't let us come in the hospital because the contractions weren't far enough apart. And so mm. what did we use that time? We'd already left the house. We weren't going back to, or the, the, the contractions weren't close enough. I'm sorry. Uh, they wouldn't let us come to the hospital, but we were already out of the house and the hospital was about 25 minutes um, from us. And so we used that time to Great hunt bourbon. well we hunted it right like oh, i went right, to right, right, yeah. for those of you in the tampa area i went to party liquors near usf i went to cigar castle i went to uh, i want to say we went to one more place maybe gas bars i don't know we drove like three or four different places because we were just killing time like my wife's like having contractions in the car but like she didn't want to do anything else so like i would just go run in and look at different bourbon. so terrible it probably makes me like a terrible person. but i got yeah, a see, uh, yeah <laughs> I got an airplane bottle of Wild Turkey 101. And when my son was born, um, and we my son was born at like two in the morning, we finally got back to our room where we would be staying for the rest of the day. We napped. And then that evening, so on June 16th, I poured myself in a little hospital cup, um, a pour, an airplane bottle pour of Wild Turkey 101. And I will never forget, obviously, Ben talked about how um, bourbon and drinking with family and friends is so sentimental to him. I will never forget drinking that wild turkey 101 the night my son was born. Right. So just kind of a cool experience. I still have the actual bottle. Um, you know, and that means as much to me as, you know, anything that I, any other bottle that I have. So, uh, you guys wipe the tears from your eyes and let's wow. go on to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> so my story was that wild turkey 101 beat Pikesville rye in a blind and TJ's was that he ignored his wife during contractions and then yeah. made up for it by <laughs> by by toasting his, his newborn son with it. I don't uh, know how to beat that. Thanks, uh, dude. Highs and lows in this uh in this business here. Ha is there a worse product that you guys have had from Wild Turkey? I mean, if not, we can just kind of move on past this pretty quickly. But no I don't worse. I don't have one because the no. only thing I have from them is the 101. So the, the long branch that I that I mixed with it is uh, like if it was like it's 45. Uh, percent of so if it was like a hundred proof i think it would actually be pretty cool all right all right all right and for a celebrity endorsed one it's not bad but but it's not probably worth the like russell's and wild turkey 101 are and rare breed obviously are, are considered like superior bang for the buck ben you don't have one i ben i know you're such a homer that you don't have one um correct yeah that's fine yeah do you have a no. wild? Do either of you have a wild turkey flex? Ooh, like I, we did the I, buffalo. We did the buffalo trace flexes, like the mm. stag and the Blantons and stuff like that. What, what are you guys flexing with? Spoiler, I, again, spoiler, again, I if you guys had recorded the buffalo trace one last week, you may have had a new flex. I don't know, but uh, uh rip. For, for, <laughs> 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 for me, the uh, the bottled and bond a 17 year old bottled and bond for uh, for the wild turkey line the uh, master's keep line is probably my flex it's a really cool bottle and it's an exquisite bourbon and at like a relatively reasonable price too so that's my flex one i'm really proud of it's one that i'm trying to drink very slowly and and i'll share that with you guys if you're interested in it it's basically wild turkey just ramped up to like 15 it's just dialed up to like all the great things about wild turkey just aged more and it it's really damn good. Awesome. Yeah. I don't really got a flex either because it's so readily available. It's so amazing. You don't have to like flex with it. It's for the unflexers. You know, don't worry about that. This is great. 
it's on, on the shelves, baby. On the shelves. On flexors. All right. Uh, if you could add any one wild turkey product to your collection, what would it be? Ooh. Um, there I'll was... jump in here because Brendan has no idea what he's right. talking about. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. No, whatever. So sorry, whatever. I have been hyping up the uh, wild turkey rare breed rye. You've been hyping it up. You've been, been hyping it up. You've been hyping it up for, for like weeks now. I'm but have you even tried different. it? Have you even tried I'm gonna it? I'm going to choose. Don't cut. No, I'm going to choose something different here. <laughs> I'm going to choose something. Okay. Listen, listen, listen. Okay. During the year 2020, uh, Wild Turkey released a product that was only supposed to be allocated to the duty free shops in the airports. And it's called the Wild Turkey Father and Son Collection, right? Well, my son was born in freaking 2020. And so, do I want to get my hands on? The Wild Turkey Father and Son release. It's in a one liter bottle. Heck yes. That'd be the bottle I would grab. Father and Son 2020, one liter, duty free. But now they're all being sold to the regular market and people are buying them and trying to check up prices. I don't like that, but that'd be what I'm buying. What if the rare breed uh, rye was like available to you though? Like, would you be excited about that? I would be very excited about it. I would pursue and purchase that. Hashtag ah. purchases, <laughs> but I, if I was going to choose one of my best, you know, and I'm, and it's, it's not even like the pinnacle of wild Turkey, the father and son collection. It's like a hundred proof. It's not like anything outrageous, you know, masters keep it all would destroy it. But the fact that it says father and son, you know, come on. Question. I, I know that. you have a bottle of, um, I know you have a bottle that you're saving for your son for yes. later. Yes. Would you drink that father and sons right away or would you wait? Uh, I have to wait. I have to wait, you know, drink it together. Probably when turn six or seven, you know, start sipping it, you know, like what you did, <laughs> like you did, you know, yeah. you know, like I drink dad, it at a young, yeah, drink it at a young age. age. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd wait, you know, I'd have to drink it with him. That'd be fun though. Father, son. Yeah. Brendan, do you, uh, do you have something you'd like to add to your collection from wild Turkey? I have a regret for Wild Turkey, and it was from the Masters Keep series, and it was one of the ones that was at Costco, and I can't remember if it was the Revival. It was the one that was finished in a sherry cask. Mm. Uh, so it was a nice aged, proofed up Wild Turkey that was finished in a sherry cask. It was like $120, and I wish I'd bought it at the time. I, I think that probably now is probably doubled in price if you want to find it online. So that's one of ever stumbling around in the store and found it like for 120, 150 bucks. I would probably probably purchase it and pursue it, pursue and purchase it. Yes. Cat intended. Um, mine's not as much of a flex item as you guys is. I, uh, Ben and I were in a liquor store the other day and I saw some wild Turkey one Oh one rye, uh, which I know Ben's been looking for the barrel proof, uh, rare breed rye, but I, I just saw the wild Turkey one Oh one rye and Thought that that looked pretty good. I didn't get it because I thought the store had a little bit overpriced and I've looked it up and it was just slightly overpriced where I saw it. Um, but that would be something that I would just like to add to my collection. It's not a super big flex item, but I like the Wild Turkey 101. I think the rye would be good. We, talk, we talked a little bit, um, you know, about just how functional Wild Turkey 101 is. And I think that rye would be good. So, of course, I'd like all the big flex items. I'd like the father and son thing too. My son was born um, three months after Ben's. Like it'd be cool, but for a realistic ad, I think that'd be a really good one. Um, so that's it. That's it for wild turkey talk. Turkey talk. We're all wrapped up there. Um, my favorite part of the show. <laughs> I'm so... Um, Favorite part of the show, pursuit and purchases. I'm going first on this one. Trademark. I've got trademark, register, copyright, trademark. Uh, I've got a purchase that happened. I'll even grab it while we're here. Live radio. I have been, I told you guys last week that I was in a raffle for this. And I bought this toasted barrel Michter's bourbon which i've been yes. searching for for months and months and months finally found it in a raffle won the raffle at i want to say it was 33 dollars, 33 or 35 so i had a one out of 10 chance of winning it and won it 
make their toasted barrel bourbon. Obviously, you can see I opened it and I drank some of it and it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And that is my most recent purchase that fulfills my pursuit that I was looking for. And I don't have a new pursuit. I'm out, I'm out of pursuits. I'll find a new pursuit by next week. But the one I told you guys about last week, I hit, I want it. My Mictors collection is complete. As you can see over my left shoulder, I have to think about these things. Um, that's the Sour Mash, two of the Rise, and now the Bourbon. So my pursuit and purchases is, I feel like I'm in a good place right now. Brendan, what about you? So I wasn't necessarily pursuing this recently, but I pursued it in the past and I loaded up on a couple bottles of it because it's really hard to find here in Tallahassee. Uh, and it's one that I like to drink seasonally. I'm not a big rye fan, as I think is well documented at this point on this show. Uh, but this is one that I love and partially because it's finished in a, in a port barrel cask. I think that helps it a little bit. But again, it's hard to find locally. I had to order one from Utah before where, where the distillery is. And then I had found another one up in upstate New York when I was up with family. And it's turned out to be one of my favorite bourbons. Uh, this one wasn't one that I was looking for. But Whoa. I got an ABC vault invite, a mid-winter Let's go. From High West Distillery. Uh, it's awesome and it is a great seasonal drink that's how they they market it as to have it in the winter but uh you have a, to name it we can't all see it did i say it's a midwinter night's tram didn't I say okay that? I you didn't I say that did you say it no I way said it. he said it okay I said it? well all right, i've been i've been drinking so <laughs> no but it's a beautiful bottle midwinter's uh, uh let's see so the midwinter's night tram is i think it's part partially i don't know if it always was but it was partially uh, MGP juice and then uh, and then as well as the High West Distillery, which is out in Utah. They combine it. It's both of those are really high rye rye. Like one's ninety five percent and one's eighty percent rye. They finish it in port. It's exquisite. I got the ABC Vault invite. I was not able to get a Pappy quickly enough. Uh, this was probably one of the next best options. It was eighty five dollars. I think TJ said he can get it like a little bit cheaper where he's. Uh, where he's at but it's really hard for me to find so it's one i'm happy to have like two or three deep in my collection because it's one i know i will always enjoy going to yeah i know really good i can't get it locally by me don't don't anybody messaging me i just have a a hookup who has gotten me uh a couple of bottles or one bottle in the past and then i did find one on a shelf one time and so anytime i think you find that a little expensive right 85 bucks but really really worth it i've got Spe special and unique and you won't have anything probably ever like that again that's yeah. I, how i look at it another really good one by them and you know we probably won't ever review this we'll see is yippee kaye which is a similar product also a very high rye blend um, that has been discontinued but there's still a lot of it out there you can still find a good amount of it they just won't make any more I like Brendan. Have you tried the Yippie? Have you tried Yippie? I've seen one bottle of it here in Tallahassee. I'm not sure what the price was. This was like a few months ago after it had been discontinued. It's mm. vermouth finished, right? Yeah. I like the Yippie slightly more than the Midwinter Night. I like both. I, I have okay. no, but I like the, the Yippie just speaks to me a little bit more. Um, but they're both really good. So if you see something like that on shelves, then go grab it. Are you pursuing anything new? Not at the moment. I feel really good with my, like, I feel like it's been a good luck charm. Like I mentioned something and it, it usually pops up uh, here yeah. since we started doing the show. So I got the, uh, uh, the smoke wagon small batch last week. I actually like got into it this weekend. It's exquisite for the value. Like I think we maybe need to do a, a test on that one to see it's like $50. That's a little high for our bourbon on the budget theory, but damn it guys. It's really, really really impressive yeah i am down to try it um even though when i invited ben up to come for the spring game the fsu spring game in a couple of weeks he backed out on us so it'll be oh, just me and you already? drinking all that good uh they're gonna be on spring break in the mountains so no uh no luck on getting ben to tallahassee that weekend huh. Huh. um I sorry i mean imagine. ben pursuits and purchases where where are we at Guys, it's been a freaking great week in the pursuits and purchases category for us. You found some uh, rare breed. Better than rare breed. Woo, better than rare breed. This is Flex City. Flex City right now. Uh, I live really close to a Costco. And uh, you'll probably hear us talking about Costco very often because I love it. And so uh, in the Tampa area, we have been hearing a lot of chitter chatter about pappies 
getting dropped. So uh, for the past week and a half, TJ and myself have been showing up to Costco near me religiously at opening <laughs> every hour and a half past the opening <laughs> to get one. So this week we acquired a all rip Van Winkle oh my year baby. God. And when I say we acquired an old rip Van Winkle, I'm saying we acquired uh, a two old rip. <laughs> Dose rips, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Flex, flex on him, Ben. Oh, oh, flex I've on him. Games this week. Oh games. The best oh. part, though, about us acquiring these is they were fifty-five dollars each. So it's not you can dollars. you can find this on the secondary market for seven hundred fifty dollars. You can go. I, I can go buy one right now for seven hundred fifty dollars. No big deal. The yeah, fact no that we got deal. it for $50 retail, MSRP is $69.99, 70 bucks MSRP. We got it for 15 bucks under that. To me, getting Pat Rip, getting something from the Pappy line at under retail to me is better outrageous than getting it at all. <laughs> like the yes. fact that we got it cheaper is better than just getting it in general. So, well, yeah, uh, uh, don't lie to me though. You guys have considered, at least it's crossed your minds of flipping it, right? Um, some consideration not that we're allowed not that that's a legal practice selling yes. selling liquor is illegal brendan <laughs> you shouldn't even consider that do you Just have a license for this brendan do you have a a license a liquor license <laughs> i don't i don't think i like the direction that this podcast is going <laughs> the aft is going to be all over you tomorrow so um yeah now atf yeah, whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, AFT. AFT yeah. Also, how do you spell bourbon, TJ? Yeah, that's... How do you spell bourbon? B-Y-R-B-I-N. <laughs> Let's take this in another direction. Are you... So you weren't... We were kind of pursuing that because we had heard that... Yes. Some things have been dropping. Are you pursuing anything else? Is there any... Are there any updates on anything else you're pursuing? Like, what else is happening? I know that it's hard yeah. to follow up. Happy, but like, what else is going on? So that's a good question. Um, since we've kind of spoken things into existence, I'm pursuing a Michter's 25 year. Oh my god! Seeing what happens with that, right? If I just say I'm going to pursue it and purchase it, and uh, it just shows up on the shelf somewhere, then I'm going to probably buy it. So I think we're going to just pursue the 25 year. But on a more serious note, I spoke with a local store about the Wild Turkey Rare Breed Rye. Um, and I have a phone call with him uh, tomorrow to try to figure out, you know, if we can kind of get one in from his distributor and that kind of stuff. So maybe I'll have an update for you next week. Maybe I won't because I'll have the Mictor 25 year bourbon. So we'll see. Um, that is interesting that you bring that up and say that. And that and since we started this podcast, you've been on this rare breed. Like, I just don't even know what the things you would do for this rare breed are. Cause that's all you talk about. Mm. All you bring up. So can you see me? Can you see? I don't know. If it's kind of creepy. I think we should say that Ben's pursuit of it is a little weird. It's been on my pursuit and purchase. I'm just saying. So what if it was one, one, what if one was just like, no. what, 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 what did you like, hear one of those? What if, are like, you kidding me? What if like 15 minutes from your house right now, there was a rare breed barrel proof rye? Where like, did what, you get that? What would you do? <laughs> he, 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 gra he grabbed his cheap pappy for comfort right then. Did you know? Yeah. Oh, DJ? <laughs> Look at this. I hope you cry right now. Okay. I for, <laughs> for those of you listening on podcast, TJ is shoving his rare breed rye <laughs> in my face right now. That is outrageous. Where did you get that? I walked in, not Saturday, Saturday, Ben and I went to Disney um the saturday before i met up with a buddy to drop off some craft beer to him and it we met at a liquor store kenny's liquor in riverview and i just walked in to see what they may have or may not have and this mm -hmm. was two weeks ago right on the mm -hmm. 20th uh, and they had one they had one yeah. at retail five dollars you've been to my house like twice since this has been in my like i just hit it in the garage you. you wouldn't see it but <laughs> yeah so this is it's a little early we are exactly one one month and one week early, but happy birthday. This is Yo, let's go. Happy birthday. I hope you enjoy this. Um, I've been plotting with Brendan since I got it. Like how we were gonna give it to you, <laughs> how we were gonna tell you. I was gonna go break into your house and like leave it in your bourbon cabinet, 
Oh, uh, swapping with my regular rare breed? Yeah, That'd just to sick. see what happens. But then, so but then we wouldn't have gotten your reaction. You know, like I think you would have just been yeah, like yeah. justified. Um, so anyway, enjoy. Happy birthday. Um, come over. Oh, soon. let's go, baby. You have to drink it with, you have to first force pour with me, obviously. But uh, yes, bourbon is meant to be drank with friends and family. Yeah. You don't need to hoard it. Let's go. So Ben almost ruined this, by the way, with his whole lovely father and son sentiment. Like we had it yeah, set up. Like I, I thought we had him set up perfectly. Oh, I mean, father you guys should have let me know about this. Oh, we wouldn't <laughs> that would defeat the you. purpose. Jesus. We <laughs> hey, it, all's well that ends well. TJ, nice. Hey, nicely done. It's really good friend stuff there. Good job. Oh, sick. Um, I got two pappies this week. I mean, can't go wrong. This is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing week. <laughs> You had a good week. I've been as excited as you are to get it. I've been that excited to like give it to you. So, um, yes. Um, you, we, talked a, we talked a little bit about um, Costco. Uh, tell us your little hat. Tell us about Costco, why you like it, what you found there in the past, what kind of deals they have running all the time. Um, just give us a lowdown on, on Costco and, and your experiences there you know, over the last little while. So I'm a big fan, big fan of the Costco liquor store. Um, and enough where I will be out because I work, I kind of work on the road. And uh, so I'll even hit up Costco's, you know, in Orlando, Sarasota, Fort Myers, just kind of see what they have. Um, they don't all, they do not have the biggest selection period, but if you can find something in there that's somewhat rare or a um, little unique, it's going to be at a good price. It will not be over MSRP um, because Costco, they don't mark things up 50, more than 15% over their cost. Um, so like I said, we, we got the both of the pappies at below MSRP which is crazy. And uh, so we found some good stuff. I've, I've talked to a couple of people and, and uh, you, you can kind of join the groups in our area and the Costco's will get some pretty good stuff. They'll get a, uh, an Eagle rare at 25 bucks. Um, one associate I talked to like about a month ago, said they got a stag junior for like $36. And I was like, Oh my gosh, can you imagine getting a stag junior at 36 bucks? Um, so I like just going in there. It, it, the, the people are always good. They're always nice, happy. And uh, it's a good place to buy. I'm glad that you guys have had a pleasant, happy, happy even Costco experience. But I got some that beef was, with Costco. That was beef like with that? Costco. That was too much. <laughs> Wild turkey. <laughs> <Not so. laughs> um, Give me your Costco beef. All right. So they, they more... have good beef too, though. Like their their regular store is good. Like not just the liquor. Yeah. Store. Right, Brendan, yeah. Go ahead. Mm. Start. The, the, the Costco parking lot in Tallahassee is arguably the most dangerous place in the entire world because you have a lot of geriatrics that are really excited about deals at 11 a.m. in the morning and, and driving around on the parking lot. But I, I digress. So every time I go to Costco and I have one about five minutes from my house, I go there. I feel like I take my life in my hands every time I go through that parking lot. Mm -hmm. And I go into the liquor store about once a week because, as Ben has said, there's the potential for really great deals. And I found a Blanton's there for fifty dollars, I oh, think, before man. Eagle Rare in the twenties, Buffalo Trace like at twenty dollars. Uh, there's a Scotch that I enjoy from uh, from Oban. It's called Little Bay. It's like thirty dollars there, and they get it about once a year. Right across the street, there's a liquor store where it's ninety dollars. I say all this to say there's some great things about Costco. Recently, uh, one, they've been loading up on the cognac and like there's a stupid dragon cognac that, that like, takes the place where all the great like uh, expensive bourbons used to be. And it's like this giant cognac uh, dragon bottle that I'm not a huge fan of. And, and it's really just cramping their, their style for the bourbons uh, pursuit and purchases. But I got a tip about a month and change ago that George T. Stagg was coming to Costco. Mm. So that's BTAC and... BTAC at an affordable price. I went there the day that, that I got the, the tip and I walked in there right at 10 a.m. I asked the clerk, I said, hey, uh, have you guys, they've been getting in South Florida, have you gotten any, any Buffalo Trace products in here recently? 
And he pulled up the sign and he said, yeah, actually we're supposed to be getting in a George T. Stag. And it was at 89 freaking dollars. That's right, baby. But he's like, I don't know when it's getting in. I'm like, you don't have any idea when it's getting in? Like, it, and I, again, my intel said that it had already arrived in Tallahassee. I'm a journalist. I have sources. I know what I'm doing when it comes to mm. research. Uh, he said, yeah, we were supposed to get it. We don't know when. So I had a buddy check by later that day. He said, I had, the clerk told him, I have no idea what you're talking about, about the George T. Stag. My wife checked the next day. And I went back one more time that evening just to see what they had on the shelf. I didn't bother anyone. She went back the next day. They told her that they were sold out of the George T. Stag. My heart was broken that somehow in that couple hour window that I missed it. Well, come to find out, guys, they never sold out of it. Two days later, I saw someone on Instagram with a receipt from a Tallahassee Costco saying they had George T. Stag. Then about a day after that, I had someone else in a Tallahassee, Tallahassee whiskey group saying they got a bottle of George T. Stag. So I'd go back and check and it wasn't there. I'd go back and check. It wasn't there. Then I had one of my friends go and he got a bottle of the George T. Stag at Costco. Uh, and then they eventually ran all out of them, but they lied. They said they never had any. My, my wife, my bride was lied to and told that they never had any George T. Stag. So Costco, two eyes to you. I'm watching you. Well, that sounds like a lot of sour grapes because my Costco right here, the Pappy, was they were talking about both the Pappies? Costco, baby. Let's you know go. To, so if I sum it all up, you know what I have to say to Brendan's story? Yeah. George Stack hopes. Rip, yeah. rip, rip, baby. <laughs> rip, rip. Man, let's go. <laughs> you guys are such good friends. Rip, I really rip, appreciate your rip, friendship. Rip. Oh. Um we talked about Costco. You can get excellent deals at Costco. Stuff under MSRP. They, I'd say, Ben, we, we go there pretty often. I mean, you go every day to Costco, but, you know, we go pretty often. What well, I'd say there's something of decent value there at Costco. What, once a, once a month? Every two weeks. Every, every two weeks, every, twice every a month? Every two, three weeks, there's something there that's like, oh, I'll go buy a bottle of Buffalo Trace for $19.99 or Eagle Rare for 26 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I got... <laughs> Ben picked me up a liter of um, double oak. Woodford Reserve Double Oaks, which Ben's not a huge fan of. We'll eventually talk about But a liter of it for, I believe, $61. Um, usually that double oaked uh, $750 is like $55. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I saw it. He was down in Sarasota, I believe. I saw it. I said, hey, pick this up. It's a good deal. So he grabbed it. We've, you know, you're just going to get really good deals there from time to time. Um, Another place that we want to talk about, quick little hack, is Brendan talked about getting his Midwinter Nights Dram out of the ABC Vault. The ABC Vault is a program that once you reach gold status within their rewards program, you get at least one vault invite a year. I've heard of people getting up to three to five. I think it's all kind of based on how much you're spending with them. Uh, But you get one vault invite a year. I picked up a Weller 12 for $30 in my first month in the ABC vault. Um, I kind of got in an interesting way that none of you will ever get in. Uh, But, well, I'll tell you guys real quick. My wife's boss had her buy a thousand dollars of liquor for his clients Mm -hmm. and I bought them all on my account. So I I didn't have to spend any of the money. Uh, That was nice. If you, if your wife's boss or your boss doesn't have you buy a thousand dollars worth of liquor, you can get in by spending $500 on their sourced and certified products. Um, that averages out to about two twenty to $25 bottles of sourced and certified wine per month. My wife is getting into bourbon. She's not the most massive bourbon drinker. She does like wine. So I go pick up two bottles of wine per month. At the end of the year, I will retain my gold status. You could also do it by just spending $1,000 on everything else in their store, anything from Bud Light all the way up to uh, Buffalo Trace Antique, anything in between um, that you can find, you can spend a thousand dollars on that and get to that gold status. I find the most efficient way to do it. If somebody in your life is a wine drinker, they have really, really good sourced and certified wines. Um, that is a really inexpensive way to go spend $50 a month on wine and you hit the gold status and you can get in their vault and pick up cool things like Brandon talked about the Pappy. I got the Weller 12. He also got the uh, Midwinter Nights Dram. 
So a cool little, um, little plug there. If you're looking for something rare, go to ABC. I, ben and I at this point buy everything from there. If it's not like special or on an incredible sale, like if we're just going to pick up Bud Lights for a party, we go get it there for the points. You know, they've got pretty good prices too. So uh, thoughts on ABC uh, since I just gave them a three minute commercial. Yeah, you did. Uh, ABC, you can sponsor us if you like, uh, especially since you're not Costco and breaking my heart. So Midwinter Nights Dram one more time. This is it. I said the name, Ben. Did you hear it th that time? It's a beautiful bottle, by the way. Or what was that? Uh, that? That's what I thought. So ABC, one thing to clarify, ABC Fine Wine Spirits is or Orlando-based. Uh, I think actually their headquarters is in Orlando, uh, but it is in Florida in general. And I think it's only in Florida. There are ABCs in liquor controlled states like Virginia and I think North Carolina. That's not the ABC that TJ is talking about. So for people, I know most of them are going to be Florida based listening to this. Uh, but for those outside of that realm, uh, don't think you'd spend a thousand dollars at your state controlled ABC and then get a, uh, a path to Pappy may not happen that way. That's probably more lottery based. Uh, so at ABCs though, and they're going to be readily like placed out throughout the state of Florida. Uh, you can get one really good deals. Like TJ said, they do a lot of stuff on sale. Uh, but as far as the vault program is concerned, uh, yeah, you can spend $500 on source and certified, or also look for a little black box that's filled in in the top right corner. Yeah. Uh, yep. That's another way to, to also get double points. You don't have to spend a thousand dollars there, which I know that sounds like a lot, but honestly, probably most people probably spend a thousand dollars a year on booze. You got to be smart how you do it. Uh, so you can go ahead and spend $500 there, get into this vault program. I usually get like three or four a year. I started in 2019. I have gotten a Pappy 15 from that vault program. I have gotten a George T. Stag. I've gotten a W.L. Weller, William LaRue Weller. Uh, we got the Midwinter Night Dram here. Uh, I don't know if you can see behind me the Blood Oath, uh, number six, which is considered one of their better ones. So you can get some fairly allocated stuff a few times a year even just like Eagle Rare at $30, which isn't a great deal, but you know, that's like the sloppy seconds of the, the vault program. If you miss out on getting it right away. Uh, yeah, that's right. I said sloppy seconds on the podcast. Deal with it, Ben. Deal with yeah. it. Uh, there's good deals to be had at ABC. You can use, uh, like TJ said, buy wine for your wife. Uh, I buy my cigars there typically because I'm not a huge cigar snob. I don't really care. Tor Fuente is usually pretty good with me. Uh, and buy presents for like my dad, my friends, that $500 to thousand dollars adds up pretty quickly. And you give yourself at least a puncher's chance at getting like a Pappy 15 for $200. Like you're not going to get a better chance at it than that, unless you stumble into a Costco somewhere. That's right. Yeah, no, that's, that's been my plan the whole year is uh, buy my wife two bottles of wine a month. You're probably buying a bottle of two a bottle or two of wine or a six pack or a 12 pack, something like that here and there. When you go to your local grocery store, you go to your local uh, gas station or whatever. I'm just trying to, I try to be a little more intentional about it and buy ahead of time. Um, so that way we have the couple of bottles and it's not like, Oh, I want something and the closest ABC is 25 minutes from me. So anyway, it takes a little bit of planning. Again, Ben ran up and had a party for his, uh, some work folks that were coming up and he ran up and grabbed some, some Miller lights from, uh, from ABC, as opposed to grabbing it from, you know, Publix or, or wherever. And he got the points for it. So I think the other thing that Brendan mentioned is being strategic with the gifts. I think if you're strategic with gifts, we always get my mom a bottle of wine for uh, mother's day, her birthday, Christmas, all these things. Those are easy gifts to just go. You're going to spend that money anyway, go grab it, go get it done. Um, All right, ABC sponsorship right now. Let's go. Five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars a month. Let's go. See, we're doing that for the people listening, but that was a heck of a plug for ABC. I, it's more for the listener. It's more for you guys listening. Try and help you out, but ABC, like, hit us up on that. Uh, yeah, we yeah, tag, tag them on Twitter. Let them know what we're doing for them. I'm gonna cut this into a video and and mm -hmm. post it so they can see it. We have a review, a part two of this episode coming up very soon. We alluded to it earlier. Wild Turkey 101. Go get a bottle wild. of wild. Listen, I'm a, oh my gosh, it's that a turkey, turkey doing. We're that. never doing another turkey product because Brendan is out of control. Listen, I'm a big fan of drinking while I listen or watch a review. You can go find an airplane bottle of Wild Turkey 101 like I did when my wife was in contractions and labor. 
yes. for, for uh, like 99 cents or a dollar 99. Go pick up a, a small bottle, a big bottle, whatever. Great deal. We, we're going to talk about the value here in just a few minutes. That show will come out on Thursday, two days from now. Go pick up some Wild Turkey 101. And they're not paying us for this, but go enjoy it while we enjoy it and let, or hopefully enjoy it. Go enjoy it while we review it. Uh, we'll be reviewing Wild Turkey 101. Check out all of our social media. It's Bourbon on a Budget. Instagram and Twitter is Bourbon Budget. I'm not going to spell it again because I'm clearly not very good at that. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, Bourbon on a Budget. Follow us there. Guys, this is a heck of an episode. I appreciate you guys for hanging out and cheers. Cheers. Cheers.